Hi, welcome back to Scripture Explorers. I'm James. I'm Aria. And I'm Daisy. And we're the Scripture Explorers. Hey Mormon, what happened to Alma? Yeah, and King Noah. Well, after Alma heard Abinadi's words, he ran away and wrote them down. After that, he started to teach them to the people. After a little while, he had to find a place where he could teach a lot of people. He had to teach them far away from the city because he didn't want to get caught by King Noah. He found a beautiful place called the Waters of Mormon. There, he taught the people to believe in Jesus. He also taught them that they needed to be baptized and the people wanted to do it. Alma told them that if they wanted to be baptized, they had to make some promises to Heavenly Father and do their best to keep them. What promises did they have to make? They promised to help each other with hard things, to help each other feel better when they were sad, and to try to be like Jesus everywhere they went. This is what the people wanted, and so Alma baptized them. That's great! After they were baptized, they met together often to pray and to learn about Heavenly Father. But King Noah heard about their meetings, and he didn't like it, so he sent his army to kill them. Oh no! Did they escape? Heavenly Father warned Alma that the army was coming, and he was able to leave with all his people before they got there. After this, things started to go pretty badly for King Noah. A lot of his people started to see that he was not a good king. There was one man named Gideon who was angry at him. He came to kill Noah, and Noah ran away. Gideon would have killed him, but Noah climbed up on a tower and saw that an army of the Lamanites was coming. Noah pretended he wanted to help his people fight the Lamanites, so Gideon would let him go. Noah really just wanted to escape. Noah told the people they should run away. He told the men to leave their wives and children and let them be killed by the Lamanites. The men were mad at the king, and they burned him with fire, just like he did to Abinadi. They wanted to kill his priests too, but the priests escaped. Did the Lamanites get all the women and children? No, the Lamanites decided to let them live, but only as prisoners who would have to give most of their food and nice things to the Lamanites. When they found out King Noah was dead, they made his son Limhi the king. Limhi tried to be the best king he could, and for a while, the Lamanites didn't attack them. But one day, the Lamanites came to war. Limhi and his people beat them that time, but the Lamanites came back the next day. They let Limhi and his people live, but they started to treat them like slaves. They would hit them and be mean to them. They put guards all around so that Limhi and his people were trapped. The Nephites decided it was time to fight. They weren't listening to Heavenly Father, and fighting was not the answer. They went to battle against the Lamanites, and many of them were killed. They tried again, and more were killed. And even a third time, and even more of them were killed. After this, they finally started to pray. Heavenly Father started to help them to be able to be strong. He helped them to grow more food, and to be able to do the work the Lamanites were making them do more easily. But it wasn't time yet for them to escape. It was still dangerous. So dangerous that Limhi had to put guards all around the city. Are those the guards that caught Ammon? Good guess, yes. This is when Ammon and his men showed up from Zarahemla. After Limhi learned that Zarahemla had not been destroyed, he and his people were so excited. They hoped that God would finally help them escape from the Lamanites, and he did. At first, Ammon and Limhi could not find a way to escape, but then Gideon had an idea. They sent the Lamanites some special wine that would make them very sleepy. The Lamanites drank so much of the wine that all of them, even the guards, were fast asleep. While they were sleeping, Limhi, Ammon, and Gideon helped all the people to sneak out of the city in the night. After leaving the city, they went to Zarahemla, where King Mosiah was happy to let them live in the city. What a great happy ending! It was a happy ending for Limhi and his people, but there was trouble coming for Alma. When the Lamanites woke up, they were mad that Limhi and his people had escaped, so they sent an army to look for them. They looked for Limhi and his people for two days, but couldn't find them, and they were lost. That's when the army found a small valley where Alma and his people were living. When Alma and his people had run away from King Noah, they had found a nice place to live. They had lived there happily for a while, until the Lamanites found them. The Lamanites made them prisoners, and they were very mean to them. But Alma and his people remembered the promises they had made when they were baptized. Limhi and his people had tried to fight the Lamanites and had not trusted in their Heavenly Father, and that's why it took them so long to escape. But Alma and his people remembered to pray and think of Heavenly Father. They were still prisoners for a little while, but Heavenly Father made their burdens light and helped them to be strong. 
Alma and his people trusted Heavenly Father so much that it hadn't been too long before he told Alma that it was time for them to escape. How did they do it? Heavenly Father told Alma to gather his people and everything they would need in the nighttime, and he made the Lamanites fall fast asleep. Alma and his people were able to escape while the Lamanites stayed asleep for a long time. They were able to get all the way to Zarahemla, and Mosiah was just as happy to see them as he had been to see the people of Limhi. Is that the end of the story? Oh, not at all. Alma and Mosiah have a lot more important work to do that we'll hear about next time.